The Asteraceae, or sunflower family, also called daisy family, previously called the Compositae. These are dicots, worldwide distribution, especially in dry, tropical, uh, warm areas. They're mostly herbaceous. The leaves vary, but they often are uh, deeply lobed. The flower heads are uh, relatively unique in the plant world. Uh, they're composed of two types of flowers, uh, ray flowers and disc flowers on um, what's called a receptacle. They um, also have sort of a unique set of bracts um, surrounding the flower head. The bracts are layered and called an involucre. Uh, the fruit is a specialized achene called a cypsella. And the many economically important species, lettuce, sunflower, daisies, artichokes, marigolds, mums, zinnias, echinacea, yarrow, in addition to uh, some uh, economically negatively important, like uh, ragweed, dandelions, and uh, thistle. Here is uh, typical flowers. Uh, so think daisy when you think the Asteraceae. The central um, disc is uh, one's kind of floret and flower, and then the petals on the outside are a second type. And you can see uh, in large drawings of those here, this on the right would be on the little um, uh, ray, uh, disc flowers, and uh, this guy with the long petal is the uh, ray flower. You can also see the involucre, um, which is a whole bunch of little layers of uh, specialized leaves. And uh, you can see an um, uh, exaggerated drawing of these down there, too, where you get the little um, tubular disc flowers and uh, ligulate. Uh, lig ligula is like a tongue, so ray or ligulate flowers on the outside edge. And uh, here are your bracts. It's the um, second largest plant family, uh, competing with orchids to see who has the most species. And, um, you know, surprise, the uh, plant taxonomists are, um, are uh, neck and neck with deciding uh, how many species there really are. These things do hybridize a lot, so that complicates things. They are in the order Asteraeales, uh, way up at the top in the asteroid group on the evolutionary tree. Many notable species, lettuce, artichokes, both Jews, Jerusalem and globe, uh, sunflower. There's many, many, many species of sunflower. Uh, the big ones that we grow to uh, get oil and sunflower seeds from are uh, the annuals, Helianthus annuus, uh, dahlias, zinnias, marigolds, daisies, asters, uh, goldenrods, coreopsis, all keeping the horticulturalists happy. We also have uh, sagebrush and ragweed. Safflower, thistles, and dandelions, and that is indeed a short list. Uh, to the right here is a picture of uh, Coreopsis palmata, a nice uh, prairie species, a little um, surfid fly on it. <coughs> here are uh, numerous examples of the typical flower with the central um, disc flowers and the uh, uh, halo of ray flowers around the outside edge. Lettuce, uh, economically 26 million tons produced in 2010. That's a lot of lettuce. Um, all of the lettuces, except iceberg lettuce, are actually pretty nutritious for us. They have a lot of vitamin A, and the darker green or the uh, purple colors are um, uh, more nutritious as they get darker. Uh, iceberg lettuce, pretty much just water and a little bit of uh, cellulose. They've been cultivated for probably four or 5,000 years. Uh, first started in ancient Egypt for their oil more than uh, for their leaves. Um, they can be toxic. Uh, some of the wild types um, have a milky sap that contains um, something called lactu lactucarium. This is Lactuca sativa, so obviously that is uh, named after the genus. Uh, it has some narcotic properties, and indeed the Anglo-Saxons called uh, many species of lettuce sleepworts, uh, which apparently they made people a little drowsy. Somewhat interestingly, there's um, some people in northern Iraq, the Yazidi, that um, are prohibited from eating Latuka by their religion. I'm not uh, quite sure why. Safflower is another uh, agricultural species. Um, it's been cultivated since ancient Egypt times when they used it for dye. They could get red and yellow dyes out of it. Um, today it's uh, more um, used for the, uh, acid, the uh, oil that can be excreted from it. Um, it's um, high in oleic acid, which um, some people think is better for you. And uh, one uh, variety of it has been um, modified to produce insulin, which is very important in um, people that are diabetic. It can be quite an expensive um, prescription to have to keep up with. Dahlias, a dazzling array of types and colors of, dahlia, of da dahlias. 
They um, are several different species um, native to Central and South America. Um, the, one of the more famous is called uh, the dinner plate, and as you can see, these, uh, the flower heads are as uh, big as this child's head. They also have uh, dozens of other types, um, very tiny little small ones, uh, ones that are, um, the leaves are kind of curled up, others that are um, spiky. Uh, there's enormous competition in the dahlia world um, to come up with the newest varieties and the biggest flowers. Sometimes people will grow um, these dinner plates, um, they will grow them um, enormous um, size, and they'll pick every bud off except one or two, and so of course uh, those um, are extremely large and that would be for competition purposes. Another big plant, not quite so much fun, is uh, burdock. It's uh, Arctium, uh, probably Arctium lapa is the uh, one you're likely to see in uh, central Iowa. When, before it starts to bloom, the big leaves can look like a, kind of a fuzzy rhubarb, and, um, uh, or maybe a cocklebur, and it's more closely related to cockleburs. Uh, it does put up a, a big seed head that eventually starts looking a little bit like a thistle or some kind of daisy. And um, its taproot is actually a popular Asian vegetable. Uh, in the States, we don't do much of anything with it except consider it a weed. And then interestingly, in the UK, um, there was a concoction of dandelion and burdock that's uh, been a beverage since the Middle Ages. And originally, it was, it was fermented sort of like a mead. Uh, but today, it's uh, sold as a fizzy sweet soft drink, uh, kind of similar to sarsaparilla. And it's uh, now gotten the the uh, hip modern new nickname of D&B. So um, if you're in the UK, be sure and look for um, dandelion and burdock pop. And uh, like so many things, uh, often uh, some varieties don't actually contain plant extracts these days, sort of like our orange sodas that uh, there's no orange has ever come near them. The second interesting thing about burdock is that um, uh, in a German engineer, in back in the early 40s, um, got interested in um, all of the burdock burrs that he and his dog uh, returned home from a hunting trip with, um, and uh, looked at them under a microscope and realized that they had tiny little hooks all over them, and that was their method for um, attaching to anything that came by. And so he spent a decade uh, perfecting that and turned it into um, Velcro. Eventually, uh, it took a long time with a lot of stops and starts, and then even when he had it uh, patented and, and um, uh, under production, um, it wasn't very um, fancy looking, and it looked sort of like scraps of fabric or something, and so it didn't get uh, much uh, interest. But finally, the folks at NASA realized it would be very useful for them when they're in um, uh, free-floating space, when things want to float everywhere, if they could just stick them to the closest wall and also opening and shutting their suits and so on. And so that gave it some publicity. And then um, mountain skiers decided uh, it had some utility for them also. The same kind of thing, trying to open and close things with big bulky gloves on, as did scuba divers. And then finally, when it hit the children's clothing market, um, it was off and running into a multi-million dollar um, business. Allergies. Uh, there are some, some serious bad players in the, the Asteraceae group. Um, what's unfortunate, you can see this nasty looking uh, pollen grain here from uh, ragweed. You can imagine how that could irritate your um, mucous membranes. However, the upper picture here is ragweed, and then that's also what you see in the right half of the lower picture. But ragweed blooms the same time as goldenrod. Now, goldenrod is pollinated by insects, so it puts out nice, pretty yellow flowers that attract um, it with nectaries in them that the insects can find and uh, get some food out in order to get some pollen and transfer it. And uh, the uh, ragweed is wind pollinated, so the flowers are not showy at all. This, these plants are in full bloom. And they just put out tons of pollen, and because the wind will carry that away to other nearby plants to pollinate them. So what happens is the goldenrod gets blamed for the allergies, because everyone's feeling um, the, the effects of the ragweed at the same time the goldenrod's blooming. And it's so much more obvious that um, you can find all over the written literature that um, fall allergies are called, caused by ragweed. And the reality is ragweed pollen are, are caused by goldenrod. The reality is goldenrod pollen is so heavy it falls straight off the plant if it doesn't get stuck on an insect. So a very little chance of you inhaling any goldenrod pollen. So uh, another case for don't believe everything you hear. Iowa examples. So we have a lot of Asteraceae in Iowa. Uh, they're very important in uh, prairies. 
And we also have them in our woodlands in Savannah. And the upper right is pale purple coneflower. A lot of people know purple coneflower, Echinacea purpurea. That is actually not native in Iowa. It's uh, more Missouri and southern um, uh, states that have it. And uh, it's just too hot and dry in our August uh, conditions up here for it to be native. So we have Echinacea pallida, which is pale purple coneflower. And a very attractive plant, not quite as useful in um, a garden setting, but uh, gorgeous in a prairie. And additionally, all these little purple spikes you see in the lower picture is uh, our Liatris. This one is Liatra pycnostachia. There are several other species of Liatris that are native, also called blazing star or gay feather. And some take water, and some like to be very dry, so uh, a wide range. And additionally, you can see these yellow flowers. Now, those are called gray-headed cone flowers, uh, Retibita pinnata, which is another uh, common native. Additionally, we have the sylphiums, uh, rosin weed, cut plant. Um, I think there's four in that genus, sylphium, in addition to rosin weed and cut plant. Uh, compass plant is another one. Black-eyed Susan, uh, Rebecca herta. Then there's a couple other Rebeccias. Uh, Helenium angustifolium is a lovely um, sneeze weed, lovely, beautiful plant. Doesn't make you sneeze. And uh, additionally, there's many others. Toxicity, not much. There's a few allergens like the ragweeds, and occasionally some people will get skin irritations from the asters and daisies, but um, in general they're um, pretty inno innocuous relative to uh, some of the other members of the plant world. More information, if you're interested in dyeing silk, uh, there's a, a lengthy explanation of how to use uh, safflower to um, uh, do so on this bottom link. And then, of course, there's uh, Wikipedia and some other general uh, interest references there. That concludes the Asteraceae.